Well, recently some Eric Lathwaite videos popped up on my YouTube feed, and I decided to do a video on Lathwaite, anti-gravity, acceleration, and the quantum field. If you may not know him, he was a really great scientist, uh, engineer, who worked with linear induction motors, and then later in his career played with gyroscopes, in which he made some anti-gravity claims that caused them to be ostracized by the mainstream. And, but his linear induction motor work is really fascinating. Here's a really quick clip from a movie that you might recognize. I want that ready for Ackbert's tea party. Of course, that was James Bond. And, but for me, the linear induction motor is fascinating because the plate is levitating in the magnetic field and then being shot at 100 miles an hour, or 160 kilometers an hour approximately. And so it brings up questions, how does that happen? What is the magnetic field made of that it can lift this plate? What's the electric field made of? How are the electric and magnetic fields transmitted through space? What's the material that transmits them? What causes the acceleration? What material pushes the plate to accelerate? And then in the video coming up, I'll ask the question, what pushes the crash test dummy? Or what material causes inertia in general? And so you see what I mean. Here's some more Lathwaite demonstrations of linear induction motors. Ready, Mary? Yes, Rob. Three, two, one, fire. <laughs> This is a linear induction motor. It uses about 100 kilowatts and it can accelerate four pound missiles such as this up to nearly 100 miles an hour. Ready again, Barry? Yes, Rob. Fire. Now, in practice, it's very easy to construct one of these guns because all you need is a whole row of coils placed next to each other like this. And each coil is simply um, a coil of wire wrapped on a bobbin. The moving part is going to be a steel rod with a copper sleeve on the outside of it. I put it into the barrel and switch on. In this case I'm going to put in a magnetic piece of wood which is a piece of aluminium. I turn on the current which is like turning on the water and the magnetic wood floats. When I let it go, it soon attains the speed of the river. But of course, in this case, the speed of the river is much greater than was the speed of the water. Again, if I dip a cylinder, this time a copper cylinder, into the magnetic river, it spins in the appropriate direction. We can have a shallow river. There is a shallow river. Or turn on some more water. There is a deep river. And turn on the magnetic water. It rolls upstream because you see the river is flowing that way. It doesn't matter whether I use a small cylinder or a long cylinder. And these are all of copper or whether I use a steel cylinder. They all roll backwards. Well, I hope you enjoy watching those. I do, even though they're a bit dated in the technology, they're still fascinating in terms of the physics, especially if you're like me, a physicist who is set on understanding the causality of a situation. What is the physical causes of this? 
Certainly we know the math. We can do the math all day. We've been using motors for well over 100 years. But do we really understand the mechanisms of the quantum field? And in case you're curious and thought about the answers to the question, the electric field and magnetic field are transmitted by the quantum field. The electric and magnetic forces are transmitted by the quantum field. There's basically nothing else there. You can repeat these experiments in the vacuum. So the quantum field is the only thing that can be transmitting these forces. And that means the acceleration too. The electromagnetic acceleration that pushes the plate and you probably realize this is the same technology used in maglev's trains. So what's pushing maglev's trains when they're being accelerated or when they're running at over 300 miles an hour? Well, it's the quantum field that's pushing. And we need to understand those causes of acceleration. And of course, when the motorcycle hits the block and the crash test dummy goes falling, flying, it's being pushed by the quantum field. So in general, where does inertia come from? It's an interaction with the quantum field. Once again, there's nothing else present that could be causing the interaction. And the lack of effort in understanding the fundamental cause of inertia is one of the biggest reasons why physics today is so screwed up. Because if you don't understand the basics of inertia, you can't understand a mechanical system like a gyroscope. You can't understand what's happening to the crash test dummy when it's flying through the air. And most importantly, you can't understand gravity. Next, I want to show a video of Eric Lathwaite and the gyroscope. And when you watch it, I want you to think about what pushes the gyroscope when it processes and pushes it upward. How is it and what accelerates it? And then how is the inertia developed? What is responsible for the inertia of the spinning gyroscope and the precessing and tilting gyroscope? And so with that introduction, here's his short video. Now in a minute I shall let go with my left hand and holding this remote end of the shaft only, I shall lift the wheel through five feet all on its own with no effort on my part. All I do is apparently just to steer it along a path that it's already decided it would like to go. Let's just do it once more to save time. We've already spun it up. So here goes 40 pounds of wheel as light as a feather. This is not a conjuring trick. This is a fact of science. Watch it again carefully. A fact about a spinning wheel that so far everyone has missed. Well, as you can see at the end, Lathwaite claimed that there was levitation, anti gravity. But that's not actually true because what happens with a gyroscope is even though in the formulas we say V cross B as a 90 degree acceleration, first procession, then upward. Instead of being processing this way or that way, it processes in a circle. And instead of going up like this, it's going up like that. And as soon as it's the gyroscope is perpendicular to the gravity, then it doesn't go up anymore. So you just don't have any lift. But what is interesting is 
as I said, you have to understand the mechanics of what's going on, the causal effects. Now, physicists and engineers will say all day, oh, it's just the torque. It just lifts itself up by torque, although there's nothing there to lift it. And I'm a physicist, and I said, okay, I want to know what causes the lift, because something is lifting it. And the only thing there to lift it is the quantum field. So, like electromagnetic acceleration, acceleration due to mechanics is due to the quantum field. And so for me, that's the important thing about his demonstrations. And here's a short demonstration of a boy handling a similar gyroscope. So you can see that it's really the same effect as a normal gyroscope. Okay. Right. Nice and easy. Nice and easy first, Dennis. Take a good hold, that's it. Yeah. Take your hands further back, Dennis. You got it. Your hands further back. Pull your hands in. Well done. Slow it down. I can make him lower it. Or raise it. Look at that. Put your arms out, Dennis, if you can. <laughs> now, I will say that that was a dangerous experiment, and he should never have done that in a public forum. If the boy had dropped the gyroscope, it could have killed people. So if you want to try to repeat experiments like that, first I recommend using smaller gyroscope and then either be in an enclosed room where you have control or an open field where no one's around within hundreds of feet of you or 100, or 100 meters because the gyroscope can take off across the field and go a long, long way. So that said, if you do these types of experiments, be, be safe, be very careful. But what it illustrates is that it's just a normal gyroscope. And if you put a scale underneath the buoy, the weight would be the same, just like the weight's the same with a regular gyroscope operating. And now to understand the claim, he did another demonstration at the same event where he put it, the gyroscope on a spring-loaded stand, a spring-loaded pivot point. And you can see that if it's accelerated, it moves upward. I'll show you that. Okay. 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 Don't go very fast. Yeah. No centrifugal force. I can make it rise, and as I do so, that spring says it weighs less. It looks a monstrous device with all that energy that I told you about to have to catch with one hand it's no problem at all it has no angular momentum this way I can lean down also casually and stop it so as I said you you can accelerate it and it'll briefly move the pivot point upward but is that really lift or is that just a trick well I think it's just a trick because I think what's happening is that instead of the pivot point being here and lifting, the pivot point's being offset and you're being, you're getting extra lift here. It's being offset into space. And then it comes back and settles back to the normal pivot point and compresses the spring again. So it's just a matter of lathe weight not keeping track of what he's doing. And that's the same thing what happens when it's in his hand. You keep adjusting the pivot point where your hand is located and the pivot points out here, which makes you feel like you have less weight on your hand when the weight is really the same. It's just very temporarily offset to the side. You can see when he's holding it above his hand and it stops moving that that he starts to feel the full weight of it. 
although it's still on the pivot point. And if you don't have to apply a torque, it's much easier to hold. So Lathwaite was wrong in terms of there's no upward motion. You can't harness a gyroscope for upward acceleration. But what it does tell us is if you're looking at it and you're asking yourself like I do, well, what is the causal interaction? What is causing the gyroscope to move? What caused it to go through a V cross B cross product type relationship? And that's because the gyroscope develops its own matter magnetic field that's not electromagnetic. It's just neutral matter produces its own magnetic field that's related to the inertia. The spinning of the gyroscope causes spinning of this field, and the spinning of the field causes the gyroscope to keep spinning. And when the gyroscope crosses its own field, it gets accelerated in a 90 degree direction. Although, like I said, it's circular, not directly 90 degree. And same thing with the upward motion. It's along an arc, not perpendicular. So that's what's happening. And then when we, we can ask the question, well, if inertial mass and gravitational mass are the same, then gravitational mass must be due to a similar interaction. And it is. Gravitational mass must be due to quantum fluctuation interactions, quantum field interactions. And then we, again, we can ask the question, what is the cause of the gravitational acceleration? What pushes the gyroscope downward in the first place? And the only thing there is the quantum field. And in order to make the inertial mass and the gravitational mass the same, that acceleration has to be the same. So the acceleration due to gravity is real. It's not a fictitious force. And it's due to the quantum field. So acceleration due to electromagnetism, due to mechanical forces, and gravitational forces are all the same. They're all due to some quantum field pressure that's pushing on objects. So for me, that's the big thing that Eric Lathwaite's lectures uh, bring to mind, is what is causing this? What is the interaction through the quantum field? Those are the questions I ask when I watch his videos. And I recommend watching a lot of his videos. They're very instructive. Even though they're a bit old, they're still very instructive today. Although he sometimes makes some false claims because he doesn't understand what's really going on. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please like it, share it with your physicist friends, subscribe for my next ones. And I discuss this a lot in my book, The Zero Point Universe. So you, if you want to read more, you can buy that book. And then I discuss problems that come out of the existence of the quantum field and other logical problems in my book, The Hundred Greatest Lies in Physics. And then my most recent book is on particle theory. And if you buy one of my books, that helps support me in my retirement and support my channel allows me to produce more videos and to write more papers and hopefully more books in the future. So thanks for watching.